Hello, I'm Dave and this is Logan, out once again for a walk in the countryside. Thanks for joining us. Now today we're at the village of Melplash in Dorset. It's about three miles north of Bridport and two miles south of Beminster on the A3066. And we're going to be doing a roughly six and a half mile circular route starting just south of Melplash and then crossing farmland to the pretty village of Netherbury before passing Parnham House and its deer park, then climbing a spectacular gorge to reach the top of South Warren Hill for some quite stunning views and then back into Melplash itself. And we're hopefully you're going to see some lots of interesting things along the way. Now I'm filming in the middle of the summer, it's a, a glorious sunny morning, quite a lot of uh, blue sky, a little bit of a wind, hopefully uh, we should be okay though, should be perfect conditions for a walk, so do come along with us. Well I've parked my car in a lay-by uh, just opposite the Half Moon pub which is uh, just to the south of Melplash and we'll start off by having a look at the church which is just behind me. It's a Christ church built uh, between 1845 and 1846 by uh, Benjamin Ferry for uh, James Bandinell who uh, worked in the Foreign Office and supervised the suppression of the slave trade. It was built in dedication of James's father, Dr Bandinell, who uh, had been vicar of Nethery Church a couple of miles away. James also provided funds to build a school next door in 1849. It's uh, now a private house. The church is built in cruciform plan with a central tower, nave, apsidal chancel, north and south transept, porch and a north vestry. Very much built in Norman style, based on a similar church in Shoreham in West Sussex. Well, let's have a peep inside. I've found some lights, but not all of them. <laughs> so it is, a, it is fairly dark. I might have to put some photos up. We'll see, see how we go. So there's uh, the, the altar ahead and the, uh, the pulpit. Oh, this is a, a splendid uh, apsidal here with the font uh, in the middle and some stunning stained glass windows as well. And look up at the uh, ceiling, some of the woodwork there. Look at that. <laughs> well, you don't uh, get too many churches with a, a badminton court inside you'll have no problem doing some high shots looking at uh, the height of the ceiling that brilliant and just next to the church is the half moon pub now it shows uh, on an 1897 map as uh, melplash inn and it dates actually from the 1600s and apparently it was winner of the dorset tourism award for pub of the year in 2020 it's uh, dog friendly and I expect it'll be our final destination. Well the pub was responsible for the establishment of the Melplash Agricultural Show in 1846. Legend has it that a couple of farmers were in the bar and they had a bet between themselves to find out who could do the best days ploughing. So on the 20th of October 1846 a competition was held between the two of them. The following year, the Melplash Agricultural Society was formed and a ploughing competition for local farmers took place on the 20th of October 1847. There's now an annual show at Bridport in August and it's one of the South West Premier Agricultural Shows. Well, we're now going to start off our walk into the countryside proper as it were by heading in a sort of westerly direction. And we've got some quite stunning views already um, to the north, which you can probably just uh, see behind me over my shoulder.
Okay, well this is a, an important part of the walk if you're going to be doing this later after seeing the video. And we're now going to start heading northwards. You need to look out for this uh, sign behind me. Uh, it tells us that we're going to be joining the Hardy Way, which of course is the uh, that 220 mile long distance path that runs from um, well, higher Bockhampton where Thomas Hardy was born and uh, Stinsford Churchyard where um, his heart is buried and it basically winds its way through Dorset linking various places that had a connection with uh, Thomas Hardy the author and poet himself. We're just making my way north. We're heading towards uh, Netherbury now. So we pass through Hawksbridge, not very big. Um, if you look at an 1897 map, there was a, a pub here called the Crown Inn, but uh, obviously it's not open now, but I haven't been able to identify whether the building is still here as residential or not, but some lovely houses around here, that's for sure. <laughs> Just done a little detour off course to show you something. You probably hear some agricultural work being done in the wood in the background. Well, just behind me here is a Slate Manor. It was built in the 17th century as an ecclesiastical courthouse and converted into a manor house in the 18th century. Well, still on the Slat Manor estate is this rather unassuming cottage in front of me here. It was originally a gamekeeper's cottage, but it became River Cottage, where um, the first three series of um, Hugh Fernley Whittingstall's uh, River Cottage was filmed. Escape to River Cottage, Return to River Cottage, and River Cottage Forever. I think he'd previously used it as a weekend holiday home. I think he's uh, moved on, but uh, not 100% sure. Well, this impressive uh, house in front of me here is called Hatchlands. It was rebuilt in the 18th century. And oh, well, the weather vane's pointing the wrong way, but uh, if, if the wind was in the right direction, I think it'll be showing a date of 1723 on it. We've now made it to the pretty village of Netherbury. Now in 1871, the village had something like six pubs. In fact, there were orchards surrounding the entire village. Cider production was a major industry and indeed at one stage um, the area produced something like 10,000 gallons of cider a year. So let's see if we can see any uh, evidence of any of those old pubs as we wander through. Right, just as we head into the village there's a, the river Brit here which is flowing quite smoothly this morning. It's um, I think it's about nine, nine and a half miles long, something like that. And it rises just north of uh, Beminster and flows south. It's joined by a couple of other rivers and flows into the sea at uh, West Bay. In fact, we've done a, a, um, a walk there and we actually saw the, uh, the mouth of it. The old name was uh, called the River Woof. Well, that's our first pub we've spotted. That's the Star Inn originally a 19th century pub. We're actually in Bridge Street. It was closed in 1968. You just see the sign of the Star Inn behind uh, the foliage above the door there. And here, just up on the left, is the, the old schoolhouse, a Victorian school. It was closed in 1974. I love the little uh, bell coat at the top. I'm making my way through this delightful uh, village. In front of me there, the, uh, the old uh, congregational chapel, 1839 I believe. And then just next to it here, this building, Brandon House Cottage. That's uh, another one of the pubs. It was, uh, well, it was actually the Brandon Hotel. It closed in 1984. And then just down here, on the right we should come to pub number three. 
Yep, here we go. A bit dark because we're on the northern side. This was the new inn. It's now called Primrose Cottage. It looks quite delightful with the red roses uh, around it. I think that's all the pubs we're going to see because the Shepherd's Crook is up uh, Crook Hill to the east. The Gollop Arms is in South Bowood to the west and uh, the Happy Return is in White Cross to the uh, to the west. But when the orchards declined, hemp and flax became the major crops and uh, these were turned into rope and sailcloths and uh, a subsidiary was making of uh, the nets and all of this supplied Bridport's uh, fishing fleet to the south. But it, at its height, Netherbury was a bustling community of about 3,000 people. So no wonder they needed six pubs. I think it's only got about 300 people here now. That's fantastic building here on the left. I think this is called the Chantry House. A magnificent uh, country house, uh, 19th century, I believe. We're nearly at the top of the hill and just over there is the, uh, again, equally magnificent rectory. <laughs> Built uh, 16th, 17th century, so that must mean the church is nearby. Wow, doesn't that look quite splendid in the morning sunshine? The Church of St Mary, 14th century nave and aisles with late 14th or early 15th century chancel and a west tower. The south porch was rebuilt in 1848 and the north vestry built in 1894 and there were some alterations and uh, renovations in the Victoria era. I think it's got six bells. Oh, here we go. So lovely and cool in here. Uh, just uh, on the left there, the uh, font. Some magnificent stained glass uh, windows. Oh look, that's um, an old uh, cart for carrying the, the coffins. Some splendid uh, brass on there as well. Uh, very uh, ornate chest. And just panning round. Wow, some definitely uh, some splendid uh, stained glass windows uh, at this end. There's the uh, the pulpit again. Some um, tremendous carvings on there as well. And uh, well, this is uh, this is uh, quite an impressive uh, church for such a small village. The uh, organ on the left. Again, terrific uh, wooden ceilings with beams there. Of course, daylight today when you get the sunshine outside you really get the effect of the, the stained glass uh, windows. And then finally, looks like uh, a memorial here on the side. What a lovely little village Netherbury is. So we're continuing to head northwards uh, to our next destination, Parnham House. And by the way, just a little uh, update for well, regular viewers will know I've got a, a young um, Whippet Fiver. He's only, uh, what, 16 months old. Um, He's doing well in the obedience ring. He's had his first five competitions and he's been in the rosettes on four occasions. He's even had a second. So he's coming along really well. Logan, well, he's retired from obedience competitions now. Um, Crufts was his highlight, but he's gonna do a few, um, what they call rally obedience competitions this summer. And uh, I've entered him in a few championship dog shows as well. So uh, see if we can qualify him for Crufts again through that route. Well these uh, ruins here is the old Clenham Mill first mentioned in 1715. It was a corn mill converted to flax in the early 19th century and it was working till about 1888 and then it was sold in 1897 to a dairyman but uh, it's now uh, now derelict but if we uh, 
just head back, I'm conscious that the sun might uh, get in the lens here, but it is still sort of in use today by the Dorset Beekeepers Association to house uh, an apiary, basically where beehives are kept. And look, you can see through there, bees <laughs> busy away. There's quite a few hives there. there must be a, a good area for honey production, I guess. I tell you, it's absolutely glorious now, it really is. So as well as being on the Hardy Way, we're also on the, the Jubilee Trail, which is a, a 90 mile long distance path from Ford Abbey in Somerset all the way down to, well, Bockerley uh, Dyke on the um, Dorset Hampshire border. In fact, we've seen uh, the starting point of that uh, on uh, a walk that we did at um, Pentridge. It was opened in 1995 to celebrate 60 years of the Ramblers Association. <laughs> interesting part of the walk. I was hoping now to have um, started to turn westwards by uh, Parnham House along a footpath but uh, the footpath seems to have been closed or certainly diverted so looks like we're going to carry on northwards for a bit so uh, we're into unknown territory now. So it may well be that uh, we won't be able to pass Parnham House and I've done all the research on it so let me tell you about it anyway. Well, the Parnham estate was given to the Gerard family in the 1190s during the reign of Richard I. It was to be a country retreat for hunting and the first Parnham house was built in 1400 as a hunting lodge and it passed uh, to the Strode or now Stroud family in the 1440s and remained with them until the 1770s. It was completely rebuilt in 1552 and remodelled in 1810 and 1852. And it's one of Dorset's oldest country houses. The estate covers 42 hectares and uh, a deer park was created in Tudor times. Now, a chap called William Barnard Rhodes Morehouse owned the house before he died in 1915. He was uh, in the Royal Flying Corps and was the first airman to receive the Victoria Cross. And I think he's actually buried in the grounds. And in the 1920s, it became a country club and it was used by the Americans in the Second World War. After the war, it became a nursing home and it's privately owned now. Now in uh, 2017 it was badly damaged by a fire in suspicious circumstances and in 2020 it was sold for 2.5 million and I believe it's going to be developed for adventure stays and visits uh, to help pay for the restorations which are uh, expected to cost millions. One other little snippet about Parnham House. Now, uh, Older viewers might remember the um, BBC television uh, comedy series The Goodies from the 1970s and early 1980s. Well, in the episode The Goodies Rule OK in 1975, there was a, a scene where the uh, goodies were chased by a giant sized Dougal the dog from the Magic Roundabout. <laughs> well, that scene was filmed at Parnham House. Aha, a little opportunity for a dog dip, which is just what we need on a warm day like today. <laughs> so this is, uh, yeah, it must still be the, the River Brit. Now, oh, you're, you're getting quite deep now. Oh, up to his chest. <laughs> it's nice fresh water anyway. You happy there? Any fish? <laughs> oh, where are you off to now? I think you'd be you'd quite happily stay here, couldn't you? 
<laughs> Come on. We're now going through uh, the deer park at Parnham. So Logan's on a, a lead at the moment. Yeah, I can just get some glimpses of the house and uh, the, the main driveway, but that's about it. Well, is that a large pink animal of some sort I can see in the distance? Or has the sun got to my head? I think I need a pint. Well, we've uh, crossed the A3066, continuing to head uh, eastwards slightly uphill. Uh, passing by an orchard, I was talking about uh, cider production earlier on, and uh, I guess this, guess this area around here really must be uh, good for apples. I mean, typical example, lovely orchard here on the left. Well, we've reached the top of this uh, ridge, and before we start heading sort of um, south uh, east, I thought we'd have a look on the other side. And really get uh, a feel for a typical Dorset rolling landscape. Ah, uh, sorry folks, <laughs> another pit stop. So this is now looking over to the uh, sort of northwest. You just have to sort of spend it a minute or two getting your breath back but also just taking it all in. Very relaxing it is too. on the homeward leg now. Some fantastic views from the top of the, a ridge here. This on the, on the right hand side that must be North Warren Hill and over here on the south is South Warren Hill. Now back in 1582 there was a really bad plague in the area uh, particularly the village of Mapperton over to the east was very badly hit. A lot of people died there and Mapperton was part of uh, Netherbury Parish. Normally the uh, dead would be buried at St Mary's at Netherbury. But as Netherbury hadn't been affected by the plague, they weren't keen on that idea. So uh, all the bodies were buried here at South Warren Hill instead. Sorry about this, but another pit stop. For the view so we've been coming along the uh, the side of this ridge here so this is looking to the north so that's uh, north warren hill along there and then the valley here a beautiful countryside vista there's <laughs> a bit of a wind up here hopefully you can hear me above that and then this is the south warren hill we're going to go up and then drop back down into into the village and then uh, continuing with this oh you can see the the sea in the far distance must be Bridport over there somewhere and the Jurassic Coast beyond this really is a 360 degree view isn't it everything so green and lush what a beautiful day to be out well, we're just about to start our descent off uh, South Warren Hill. So, in the distance there, I can just about make out the uh, top of uh, Netherbury Church, where we were earlier. And then uh, well, a spectacular view looking south. We're going to make our way down across the main road and onto the field on the other side. And uh, I can just about make out the top of Meltplash Court. I'll tell you a little bit more about that when we get nearer to it. And then the far distance is uh, the church at um, Meltplash where uh, our car is. <laughs> well, we made our way back off South Warren Hill, across the A3066. We had to do about 100 yards along there, quite a busy road, until we could come off that onto a footpath. And just on my left here, is Melplesh Court. 
Now, I can't really see too much of it because it's quite well hidden by trees. Now, it was rebuilt between 1590 and 1601 and had extensions over the years. And it was uh, owned by the Paulet family. But Sir Thomas More owned it in the early 16th century and uh, he was the, the sheriff or a high-ranking official of Dorset at one time and after a good night out he uh, set free all the prisoners in Dorchester jail and after sobering up he had to beg a pardon from the king and uh, the pardon was won for him by Lord Paulet. Now for his help Paulet demanded uh, from Moore one of his daughters uh, duly dowered for one of his sons <laughs> and that's how the manor passed from the Moore family to the Paulet family <laughs> or so I read and here we are back at uh, Melplash and uh, heading along a back road back to the Half Moon pub for a well-earned pint well folks we've come to the end of our walk we hope you enjoyed it if you did please do give us a thumbs up and a like and do leave a comment and do um, check out our facebook page dave's countryside walks we've had another super walk today i mean the weather once again has been quite glorious and the scenery quite spectacular so until we meet again thanks for watching and cheerio right sir should we go and find a pub Thank <music> you.